sad and shocking. Many people say this is for the most part a quiet neighborhood, but overall just sadness among many. Well, guys, I was able to actually talk to a couple of the people here last night uh, as investigators were on scene. If you're someone like me who woke up with many of these emails, all of those emails about Cyber Monday this, Cyber Monday that. This line wrapped around the entire building. There are hundreds here. Some people here as early as 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a live look of what it looks like. They are... This is one of the most energetic and excited groups I have seen in three years of covering Black Friday. So this is an unbelievable group. They're excited. They're cold. They're braving the cold. Well, guys, the city is actually on board with this. You can see a sign just like this one right here for the crosswalk. Drivers say it's a rewarding experience to build a connection with the children and their parents, especially because they're the ones making sure that their precious cargo get on the bus safely in the morning and then off the bus safely in the afternoon. Newport Middle School is one of the schools that has been hit the hardest by this flu outbreak here in Harrison County, and it's leaving many of these desks empty. As you see behind me, no school buses, but I wanna show you something. There still are buses here, and the main reason for that, the drivers work other jobs, and it takes time for them to get back here in time for pickup. Lawmakers in Charleston are talking about a 1% increase for teachers, but some we spoke with today say that not enough. Barber County Senior Center is cutting the group meal here at the Boffman Towers, but the meal will still be offered at the Barber County Senior Center. A van will pick up residents right here and drive them right here to the Barber County Senior Center. Well, you might recognize this famous scene, but you may also recognize that baby Jesus is missing from the Gracious Living Nursing Home in Fairmont. This is video that Morgantown resident Bron Kayal shot on his cell phone of a burglary suspect being taken into custody. Kayal thinks he reached through the pet door and managed to unlock the main door. It was really scary. But it's the clues that led up to finding the suspect that had them mysterious. I saw his like jacket and hat laying by our back door. Lauren Kuhn admits that she is typically a paranoid person, but in this situation, there was no paranoia. You feel yeah. violent. When she truly thought someone had broken in. I did not expect to find the guy downstairs. Of course, I was just doing what we have done in the past. And if we hear something, go downstairs. And he was sitting in the mudroom. That's when Braun got his gun. As soon as I saw him in the mudroom, it immediately I raised my firearm and pointed it towards him. As soon as Braun found the suspect, he remained calm, saying he tends to stay relaxed in stressful situations, all while protecting himself his fiance, and his two kids. Like, don't move, uh, don't make any movements, do not get up, sit right where you are. They aim to solve this mystery with their two young children who were both home at the time. Throughout this ordeal, their top priority was making sure their children weren't harmed. I wake up with our daughter, she's only six months old, all the time through the night, and last night I just felt so uneasy. What are you doing here? You should feel safe whenever you go home, and it's just so hard whenever someone was in there. As Dylan takes his turn around the bases, we'll tell you his story. Born with Down syndrome, Dylan is a friend to many. Everybody that knows him loves him, and everybody that he knows, he loves. Throughout his childhood, everywhere he goes, he knows someone, and someone knows him. If we would go shopping uh, at the mall, he would walk up to people and want to grab their hand and walk with them. From South Harrison to RCB, Dylan has looked up to Mark Jones, both a teacher and coach at the school. It's like an older brother relationship. It's, it's pretty special. Actually, it's beyond special. It's a relationship so one of a kind. Mark doesn't look at Dylan as just a student. My buddy. And Dylan doesn't look at Mark as just a teacher. Dylan calls him his buddy, so he's not just a teacher. He's his friend. Friendships, no matter what type of friendship you build, you know, it's going to be lasting with somebody. Since last year, Mark has been finding a way to get Dylan up to the plate. On Tuesday, it became reality. It didn't matter if you were a Bird fan, a Lewis County fan. It didn't matter because we were all Dylan fans at that moment. The scoreboard was irrelevant when the final out was made. A boy's dream came true when the Eagles took Dylan under their wings. Being able to do what we did the other day with Dylan, was that's more important than any win, any loss because everybody wins in that situation. And a mother proud of her son for overcoming his obstacles. If he can make a difference in the kid's life in the school, um, just like they do for him, that's all I can really, really ask as a mother. All 15 of our guys, along with the coaching staff and the fans, it's something we're going to remember. 
probably we're going to remember it maybe even more so than what Dylan will. And that's the story of Dylan Cunningham, who hasn't let anyone keep him from scoring. She says, Grandmother, we lost the bridge. Tucked away just outside of Pine Grove in Wetzel County, there was once a bridge connecting North Fork Road to Shirley Rice's home. It's kind of scary. Just a month ago, devastating floods destroyed part of the county. It hasn't been easy, but we made it. It was a morning Shirley remembers quite well. My daughter-in-law called me and I crying and she said, Cheryl, she said, we're, uh, we're flooded. She says we're in the house and we can't get out. She's lived in the home for about 50 years. She thinks back to 1978 when her husband helped build the bridge over Fishing Creek. He passed away last year. We've had to work for what we got. Shirley Rice lives in this home across the creek here in Wetzel County. Now for decades there was a bridge that stretched right across the creek but since last month's flooding that bridge has been a thing of the past. There's no ambulance. There's no fire fire trucks. There's no nothing. There's no way in or way out. He showed me how to uh, you know, start four-wheeler and run it. Her son Jeff shares these concerns, not only about the transportation, but also about what they've lost. I was worried where we was going to go. On the topic of how to get around, Jeff says there aren't many options. That's the only thing we've got right now. It's either ride or walk.